here. Renato. Uh, Present. Travis Whitman. Here, sir. All right, welcome to class. Settle down, take your seat. This is Oahe Volcanics 101, and we are going to learn today. So buckle in. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are talking about the Oahe Volcanics. I'll give you a little bit of information about that. For those of you that don't know, the Oahe Volcanics are located down here. I'm going to outline it with the mouse in the southwestern part of Idaho. It's kind of south of Boise and east of Napa and Caldwell. It's really a pretty gorgeous area. If you guys have never been there to check it out, I highly recommend it. To get there, you can go along I-84 up through Boise and Napa, and you can get off on Highway 20, Idaho State Highway 55, uh, Highway 95. It'll take you all along through this area here. Um, the Oahe Volcanics are actually not just something that's specific to Idaho. It's actually making up part of the uh, Basin and Range Province, which covers southwestern Idaho, the northern part of Nevada down here, along with the eastern part of Oregon over here where the mouse is. There are four different main rock types that you will find in the Owyhee Volcanics. The first one I'm going to talk about just briefly is this little pink area right here. That is granite, which is from the Cretaceous period, which a lot of scientists believe is also an outcropping or part of the Idaho batholith, which is this big pink area up here. The next one that I will talk about, let's see if I can click on it, is the welded tuff. It's just uh, uh, part of the rhyolite and uh, volcanic ash fields, part of from which kind of come from the chalice volcanic fields in the Eocene area. Over here, we also have the uh, rhyolite and the quartz latite, which comes from the uh, Miocene felsic volcanoes. And down here in the darker area, we will have the basalt flows, which is the pyroclastic debris and classic sediments from the Pleocene basaltic volcanoes and classic sediments. It also helps make up part of the uh, Snake River Plain. And here in just a minute, we will go into a little further detail about the rock types, and you'll get to see some of them. Here we have a sample of granite found in the Owyhees. It is a felsic composition, phaneritic texture. It's from the Cretaceous period, and this is a rock that forms by cooling slowly beneath the Earth's surface. Here we have basalt, which is found in the Hawaii during the Pleiocene era. It has a mafic composition, an aphanitic texture, and an extrusive origin. It is also a rock that cools quickly. Uh, this is welded tuff. It's volcanic ash mixed with classic sediments, which is later lithified to form the rock. In this case, rhyolitic class are visible. It has a pyroclastic texture, a felsic composition, and an extrusive origin. So these are thunder eggs. Though they're not actually a rock, they are better classified as a geological structure. They are formed usually in nodules which have a hard agate center inside of them, or they're formed as geodes, which I don't have one here, but the geode just has the hollow opening in the middle. Um, they're usually formed in rhyolite or welded tuff. In this case, these were formed in welded tuff, but they have a rhyolite shell on the outside of them. Um, how the agate is formed in, on the inside is up to debate by a lot of people, though many scientists believe that it is simply formed of the drying of a silicate colloidal gel on the inside, which formed the agate on this one and made the flat surface at the top for the uh, water level. But these were formed in the Oahe Volcanics and approximately the Miocene era. During the Cretaceous period, granite rose into the lithosphere, forming what is now the Idaho Batholith. Part of the Idaho Batholith shows itself in the Oahe Mountains. During the Eocene era, the Chalice Volcanics covered the area with volcanic ash, which later turned to welded tuff. Roughly 14 million years ago, the first caldera of the Yellowstone hotspot showed up in Idaho. It was located in the southwestern co corner of Idaho and was shared with Nevada and Oregon. This produced some of the oldest rhyolite fields in the Oahe front. The second caldera in the Oahe region is located here. The Bruno Jar Bridge erupted that eruption that occurred approximately 12 million years ago was massive and produced one of the largest rhyolite flows in the world. The ash fall from this eruption traveled for hundreds of miles covering what is now Nebraska. This produced the ash fall fossil beds where prehistoric animals were found fossilized in 10 foot thick volcanic ash. This event has been compared to Pompeii, but unlike the people of Pompeii, these animals did not experience a quick death from heat and poisonous gases. 
Because the ash had traveled such a great distance, it was cool and not poisonous. This caused the animals to simply breathe in the fine particles, which eventually suffocated them after a long and agonizing period. As the North American plate continued to move southwest over the hot spot, a path of subsequent calderas and volcanic fields carved out what is now the eastern Snake River Plain, extending all the way to where the hot spot sits now, underneath of Yellowstone. The northern boundary of the Oahe region is riddled with normal faults, as the black lines indicate on this map. The faults are believed to be a result of the Basin and Range province extension over the last 12 million years. As the North American plate moves to the southwest, tension is applied to the region causing a series of normal faults and allowing the western Snake River Plain to be downdropped, making a horse on the Oahe Plateau and a graben in the western Snake River Plain. The combination of the base and range extension and the uplifting of the volcanic activity of the Oahees have formed the Oahe Mountains as we see them today. The eastern portion of the Waihi region is a canyon land where the rivers cut through the rhyolite and basalt flows, forming deep canyons that are a dream for river rafters. The majority of the basalt flows in this area were caused by magma upwelling to the surface through rifts caused by the tensional forces applied to the region. Throughout the last 17 million years, intermittent basalt flows have affected the area. The flows were caused by various things, such as the Columbia basalt flow. Basalt flow from the volcanic fields associated with the calderas, as we mentioned before, the rifting. Along the entire northern boundary of the Oahe region, lake sediments can be found. These lake sediments are left over from the ancient Lake Idaho, which existed 9 to 4 million years ago, and is believed to have overflowed and drained to the west from glacial melting. Other lake sediments could be the result of Lake Bonneville overflowing and flooding the Snake River Plain, 17,500 years ago. This brings us to the present-day Oahe region. Silver City used to be one of the largest towns in the Oahes. However, all that remains now is a ghost town. In 1863, Michael Jordan, not the basketball player, with a group of men went into the Oahe's prospect for gold. They discovered it in what is now Jordan's Creek. This spawned a gold rush that was responsible for producing large quantities of gold. This gold rush in mines such as Silver City brought a massive influx of people to the Oahe's. This allowed Silver City and other mining towns to grow rapidly. In 1864, large rains of silver were also discovered, increasing the rush to the Oahe's. These combined events really put Silver City on the map. In 1864, the Poor Man was also discovered. It is believed to be the single largest vein of silver ever discovered. Mining in the Oahis prospered, producing millions of dollars worth of gold and silver. The mines and the town were successful until 1875, when the Bank of California collapsed and shut down the mines. In the 1880s, new discoveries were found on Florida Mountain, bringing back the mining boom to the area. This boom lasted into the early 1920s. During this time, the mine saw a significant loss in production, eventually ending the mining industry in this location.